Hi everybody, it's Ricky Heller from RickyHeller.com and today I'm here with a very special guest, Brody Welch. I'm so excited, I met Brody um, a couple months ago now I guess at a conference in Dallas and um, we were just talking, we have so many interests in common and I thought this would just be a great complimentary discussion about Candida and um, Brody is a licensed acupuncturist, she's an herbalist, she's a senior healing qigong teacher, a Chinese medicine expert, and a self-care strategist, so she does a whole um, plethora of things. And I'm so excited to have her here today to talk about the connections between Chinese medicine and Candida, and we'll see where else our conversation goes, we're we'll talking about a whole bunch of other things. So welcome Brody. Brody, I'm so glad you're here today. I'm really happy to be talking to you. Yeah, and it's so nice to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it feels like we're back in Dallas, yeah. <laughs> except for with all of, for all of you as well. <laughs> Everyone who was there, hi. <laughs> yes. So, um, as you know, my audience, there are a lot of people who are dealing with candida, but also, you know, other um, food, special diets, gluten-free, sugar-free, all those things. But particularly, I want to talk about the connection today between Chinese medicine and candida, and, and Chinese medicine is something I'm personally very, very interested in. I've had some treatments, and it just piqued my interest, so I can't wait to learn all this stuff from you. So maybe just for people who aren't yet familiar with it, could you talk a little bit about what Chinese medicine is and what somebody might get out of working with a Chinese medicine practitioner? Absolutely. So Chinese medicine is a complete system of healthcare that's been around for thousands of years that originated in China, obviously. And it is comprised of um, it basically a, a philosophy of how to treat the body so that it comes into a holistic balance, right? The goal of um, it, of Chinese medicine is to to see the body as as a whole and and to um, that basically health is kind of an, an optimal state of functioning of that whole. And the the branch, the sexiest branch of Chinese medicine is acupuncture, right? People usually are come by. Um, to know Chinese medicine through acupuncture. Some acupuncturists also are trained in Chinese herbology um, and lifestyle and diet is another branch. Um, Qigong is sort of the exercise branch or exercising with your energy as opposed to like pumping iron. Um, meditation, um, it, that all these various uh, ways of body work, also another part of Chinese medicine, that there's so many different ways in to affect the balance of the body. And so it's really, it, um, it's the kind of thing where it, it's basically applied philosophy. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so, yeah, and this has been around for thousands of years, right? Our, um, one of our famous um, oldest textbooks is 2,200 years old. Mm -hmm. And our, you know, our earliest herbal books are, I believe, 2,500 years old. And, of course, oral tradition takes it back further than that. So I'm comfortable with saying it's at least 3,000 years old. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, it has stood the test of time. And a lot of the same kind of um, strategies, either with, points or with herbs are these really old recipes that have been uh, working for people for quite a while. And even though, uh, you know, one of the hallmarks of Chinese medicine is that we don't treat diseases, we treat people, right? So, you know, in the same way that, um, you know, that one condition might be treated 10 different ways based on what else you have going on in your body and the ideology, like how that disease came to be in you versus in someone else, right? And uh, so there's... Um, so it's not like, well, what are the points for candida or like, what are the herbs for candida? It's like, that's the wrong question to be asking for, you know, in Chinese medicine. It's like, well, what, how is it showing up in your body? And then we, we have different treatment strategies depending on you, the person, not uh, the affliction particularly. So in a way it's a, it's a, um, it's a really sophisticated and elegant way of treating these diseases that often get lumped together under one big heading, right? You know, that, but that present in a myriad of different ways. And so it's the kind of thing where like, we don't actually have to know that somebody has candida or, you know, has a particular virus in order to be able to treat them for that because we're treating how it's showing up. And obviously like if we do like the, you know, from the scientific angle, we bring in the biomedicine and that allows us to be more specific with our treatment strategies. Um, but it's not necessary. It can be a standalone, independent um, way of looking at the body, which a lot, a lot of times is something that it's just an entirely different way of seeing yourself. And oftentimes looking through that lens of Chinese medicine allows us to make different choices than, than we would 
um, if we have not been able to see ourselves in that light. Wow, I, I love that. I love that it's uh, individualized for each person. And I, I really think that allopathic medicine is going in that direction with you know, yeah. the branch of functional medicine. So, Absolutely. You know, I, like I said, I was familiar with it in a general way and also other holistic treatments, but how would you say, or, or what could somebody get out of working with a Chinese medicine practitioner that they maybe wouldn't get out of working, say, with a conventional, or not conventional, but a naturopath or some other holistic <laughs> professional? Well, I think that, um, well, first of all, they'll be seen as a whole, right? It, they, they won't be seen as a jumble of symptoms. And I think naturopaths tend to do this better than, uh, than uh, conventional MDs, simply just because the, the model lends itself to specialization, right? It, that you see a dermatologist for your skin, you see a gastroenterologist for your gut, you see a psychiatrist or a counselor for your brain, and, you know, and, and very, very rarely is anybody tying all of that together. So, so one thing that someone who practices Chinese medicine will do is see you as the, as the whole that you are and see how how indeed you know that the choices that you're making um, in your life with respect to diet um, what stresses you're under um, you know the environmental factors the emotional factors um, what you're doing you know how you're moving your body and what you know the, and what what things you've been exposed to what your tendencies are um, that sort of the mind body spirit angle will all be considered as well as it, it, you know what what you're doing in your daily life and then and, and that really offers you, um, it empowers you, right, it, with, with a whole lot of, um, of different ways of going. So, um, and a lot of times, um, just that insight and understanding. So if you see a, an acupuncturist, a Chinese medicine practitioner, you'll likely be given um, a diagnosis that is in the form of something like liver chi stagnation or spleen chi deficiency with dampness, you know, like these, these metaphors that we have for understanding how our bodies work. And a lot of times, you know, seeing ourselves as, as beings of, you know, that instead of seeing yourself as like a bag of meat, you know, like a, as, as a, a bunch of stuff that we identify with the energy of who we are, right? That we know that matter and energy are the same thing and that they're converting into one another all the time, right? We've got metabolic processes going on. We've got cells that are being created and destroyed every second. Um, all of this is, you know, it is dynamic, and and that it, and really, we know that at the at the atomic level, we're mostly empty space, right? And so, identifying with the energy of who we are rather than the stuff of who we are, um, and it a lot of times, like change becomes possible. Um, at a much more rapid rate than if we think of ourselves as just like the same old jumble of stuff. That, that's pretty crazy, right? I mean, <laughs> in those terms, but yeah, it makes total sense. And in terms of physics, this is, this is the reality. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, I remember um, reading that bodies are, are, is it mostly, we're mostly air, right? <laughs> like when you look at the actual molecules. So it, it's amazing that we, we are here and that we can think of the function. But so, okay, given that then, and, and you were saying mm -hmm. well, the diagnosis might be um, dampness in the spleen or whatever, is there a particular view of candida within Chinese medicine or how would it be treated? If, if yeah. Medicine? Uh, so, so again, like looking at like that, that candida itself would be considered um, a parasite or a ghost, right? Like literally something else that comes into your body that wants to use it for its own purposes, and you know, or and that screws up your ecosystem. No, that feels right. Having yeah. <laughs> the same, the word goo means parasite as well as ghost, or you know, it, that, anyway, it's sort of, and and especially uh, you know, and there's different kinds, right? That and the um, so the 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 parasites that want you to keep eating sweet, you know, would be kind of one way of looking at, at candida and how it manifests. Okay, so somebody for whom candida is showing up as fungal infections, you know, like where they're getting, you know, yeast infections or athlete's foot in addition to gas and bloating and feeling heavy. It's like those are kind of, those are going to be some classic damp signs, right? Cloudy thinking. Um, if you can feel like a fog has come into your body, it makes you feel heavy and weighted down and logy and lethargic and, and it gives rise to stickiness right you know like you might have phlegm you might have nasal congestion you might have you know like you know icky yucky discharges right you know it's it's not it's not fun stuff it's uh it's turbid right there's an element of excess and there's an element of, of sticky yuckiness to it right so that's going to be like the dampness picture now that dampness might come from eating you know 
too much sweet, too much refined carbohydrate, things like that. And that may well be part of the picture of cleaning it up. But it also might be in a given individual giving rise to heat, you know, giving rise to like red, inflamed, itchy things, right? Or, or joint pain or, you know, the, um, things that are more of a hot nature, right? Things that are um, red, swollen, painful, or inflamed, you know, like that, that kind of thing we might, um, dampness in that case would be combining with heat. And so like we would be seeing that sort of differently. Um, the spleen I'm using with a capital S. So in the spleen oh. in Western medicine. Oh yeah. Pause for the pet interruptions. Um, so it, when I, when we're using words like spleen or liver in Chinese medicine, I'm you can go on. Okay. Yeah. I'm really using a capital letter here. So like, yes, the organs that we know and love, but also a much broader conception of what these organs do. And so in Chinese medicine, the spleen is not only um, an internal organ and one that's responsible for the production of energy and production of blood, um, but also responsible for uh, digesting our food and digesting our lives, right? And so in, in terms of um, converting non-self into self such that it nourishes us and so it in terms of the spleen um you know the spleen also has to do with um worry and it also has to do with your ability to concentrate and to have an intention that's clear so if someone you know with at spleen sheet efficiency with dampness kind of a classic thing is like you're not digesting well and it's giving rise to kind of this um, this inability to think clearly, to sort your priorities clearly, um, it, it, things just become kind of muddled. And so we would often treat that together, you know, so a combination of herbs in a formula, some of which would be working to nourish and support and tonify, as we would call it, the spleen, and some herbs that would be working more on sloughing off the dampness, right, transforming it, seeping it out, draining it, um, making it, uh, making the body, the body less boggy, you know, but literally like that. That, that's amazing. And because you have literally just described pretty much every uh, symptom of cantina, right? <laughs> well, it's, you know, Chinese medicine is, it's an amazing, you know, this, this idea of metaphor of an ecosystem that it's, it pretty much describes every disease if you can nail it, you know, like if you're, if you're looking at a human being. And of course we, the way that we diagnose, we look at the tongue. Um, the tongue is a little map of what's going on in the body. Uh, we take the pulse at six different positions or three different positions at three different depths. And that gives us information about what's, what the internal climate is like. Like, we also observe uh, your face, we listen to your voice, um, we look at how your overall demeanor and, you know, and, and kind of um, we add up all of these diagnostic tools with your symptom picture and then construct a treatment plan that is just for you. Wow. So is there, now I don't even know if you can answer this question, but is there a sort of a, a general timeline for something like that to get better? Like is there, if let's say you yeah. in India? Uh, yeah, certainly. Um, the thing with um, the thing with our ecosystems, right, especially ones that, that that begin in the gut, is that it takes a while to change an ecosystem, right? And so, typically, um, you know, that it, if someone's got a digestive issue going on um, or something that is gut central. Um, I usually say a minimum of three months, probably more like six, you know, it's in order for things to resolve. And of course, that's going to depend on a lot of factors, right? How compliant a person is, is willing to be with dietary recommendations, with taking herbs, with minimizing stress, right? You know, like what, one thing that, that we think about a lot is that um, that how we, you know, you don't even necessarily, you could be eating like the best food on the planet and not digesting it well if you're stressed out all the time. You know, and so it's the kind of thing where like that where for, for one person, the key might really be, um, you know, taking some herbs that are going to transform dampness or, you know, kill off the parasites or kick out the ghosts, you know, however, we, whatever you want to think about it as. Um, and for another person, it's like, it's really going to be about learning to breathe and learning to relax and learning to teach the nervous system that life isn't an emergency. Wow. And yeah, I, like, I was just saying this in my last blog post, actually, that for me, over the years, I've come to believe that more than anything else maybe in my case stress is a huge factor like we don't give yeah. enough, we don't give enough credence to how stress affects people's overall health right it's it, it is a hugely overlooked factor because it's so epidemic you know it's like the 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 frog in the cook pot right you don't necessarily notice that the temperature is rising until it kills you you know and and for a lot of people it's it's that um 
you know, it, it takes a health crisis to really bring that into focus. Yeah, and I think more so here in North America. Like I remember mm -hmm. reading, I think it's the U.S. has some of the, one of the the smallest number of statutory holidays in the Western world. Like, mm -hmm. We in Canada have more holidays than you guys. <laughs> yeah, and, and everybody works on vacation, you know, and, and there's no, you know, like, the, forget about paid leave, forget about time off, you know, that, that it's really a culture of busyness. Yeah, and that can really, really take a toll. So I think for me, learning, like you were saying, learning how to breathe is, is huge, paramount. But I'm fascinated by the fact that somebody's health issues could resolve based solely on learning how to deal with stress even if like you think even if they didn't necessarily change some of the other factors if stress was their issue and they mastered it then they would still get better they would get a lot better you know like they, they may not um they, they may not be cured but it's it, but they it, it's the kind of thing where they um that that usually usually they start to feel better in other ways right so for example if somebody is addicted to sugar because they aren't getting enough sleep, right? And so they're self-medicating. They're trying to get that energy from somewhere. And so they're getting it from calories and they're getting it, you know, and their lives are so busy that they're getting it from, um, you know, they're grabbing a bagel or something instead of really taking time to nurture themselves. So for that person, it's like they don't even have a prayer of getting better unless they're willing to change their relationship with time. You know, and a lot of times it, it's like when they do slow down and recognize, oh yeah, I could start my day with five minutes of breathing or five minutes of meditation and I could take breaks throughout the day and go outside in nature and just check in with myself and, and remind my nervous system to calm down and, you know, in these various ways. Um, they're, they're going to be, um, they're, they're not going to have that additional, um, they're not going to be taxing the systems responsible for digestion in the same way. And therefore, our ability to process that input is going to go very differently. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I always use the example of my husband, you know, because like, I'm a type A, I'm like stressed out all the time, anxious kind of person. My husband is the most, I, I say this jokingly, but it is true. He's the most laid back human being type <laughs> That. And so that's probably you know, why you picked him, right? He balances you out. <laughs> you know, maybe yeah, subconsciously or something. And so sometimes it makes me crazy though, because like, you know, I'm like, we got to go somewhere, we got to get there on time. And like, yeah, don't worry, don't worry, be happy, kind of thing. But I have to say, he has, you know, the guy has no health issues, right? And yeah, and it's not that he eats poorly; he doesn't. Mm -hmm. but he does eat whatever he wants. He'll eat cream. He'll eat sugar. He, He's an omnivore, so he'll eat fried foods if he feels like it, but he's he's pretty moderate in what he eats, but he yeah. does the full range of stuff, no junk food though. But so actually, I wanted to just um, maybe talk a little bit more about this, because you actually have a program that deals with calming yourself and, and stress, don't you? I do. Um, after saying my the same things thousands of times to patients over the years, I realized that um, I, you know, in the course of an acupuncture treatment, it's difficult to teach somebody how to meditate or how to breathe and get them, you know, and diagnose them and get them on the table and give them an acupuncture treatment and make a personalized herb formula in a way that is, you know, it's like half the time um, people don't necessarily need to see me as much. What they really need to do is um, is help themselves. And so I created a program uh, that is, it's an eight week course and it is hefty. Um, it has a lot of, um, a lot of what I consider like the most successful, the most effective clinical strategies that I've seen to help people manage stress and anxiety and therefore a whole host of other health issues that they might be coming to me for. Um, and it's delivered, you know, it's delivered um, every two weeks. Um, there's new material and the last module is all about how to make these new habits stick in your life because really it's what you do every day that's going to trump what a practitioner can do with you. I don't care what they're prescribing or, or what kind of medicine they're in. It's um, that your lifestyle um, is going to win. And so helping people, um, giving people the tools ranging from, you know, where are the acupoints I could be using for stress? What essential oils could I be putting on those acupoints? Um, what are some super simple ways of moving energy in the body? Simple breathing instructions, um, little uh, body scanning, like little things as well as looking at limiting beliefs that you could do in five or 10 minutes throughout your busy day, you know, that, that could help you really change your relationship with stress. So I figure, all right, for the cost of like one and a half acupuncture treatments, somebody could change their entire life. And um, so that 
that's why I put together this program. And it's really, I'm really proud of it. It's uh, the people who've gone through it have said that, you know, oh, I've never been able to meditate before and now I'm meditating every day or, you know, that this is really, um, you know, I, I now know how to stop myself from panic attacks and, you know, various things that, that it's like, that is incredibly gratifying to me because it really is, um, when you change your relationship with stress, you, you, um, your risk of practically everything health related goes way down and it, it's um and it's just really empowering to know um how to take care of yourself in this way and you show up happier you show up more confident and you're able to give your gift to the world and and that's really what it's all about i think in life that sounds great and i know i actually had a sneak peek of the first module <laughs> you guys this is an amazing program it's um thank really you cool. and i just felt felt it was very accessible too so maybe just quickly tell people how they can find it on it's on your site brodywelch.com yeah i think it's under the learn from home tab now I, i've been um really I, I have a couple of classes where people can learn from home one is um one is calm yourself and the other one is a qigong routine that can be done in 20 minutes or less and it's um so yeah brodywelch.com and then at the tab at the top learn from home should be right there Perfect. Um, and so, my, my, I guess my, maybe to wrap things up a little bit, would you be willing to share um, a little exercise with us to, to maybe um, deal a little, help people deal a little bit with letting go of stress? Absolutely. Uh, so I actually picked out a point um, for for your uh, listeners and viewers um, that I'd like to, to share with you, a location of a special acupoint that deals not only with stress, but with um, digestive issues and with the spleen and, and with dampness, really, all of the, the big three <laughs> that, that I think usually go along with candida. So would you like to know this location of this particular point? Let's kind of share it with you. Okay, so it is found. I'm going to see if I can stand up so that you can see it on me. Um, okay, that's a boob shot. That's not so good. All right, so a little bit lower here. It's on this. Um, if you wrap your hand around to the side of your body, um, at the level of your navel, and then um, go up to like where your flesh meets the bone. So right about there, the side side of your body, the tip of the eleventh rib. You should find something that's a little bit sore. I don't know if that's able to be found, but generally speaking, if you go right at the level of the navel and then over so the midline, your ribs end. Is that what you're? Yeah, exactly. So the tip of the eleventh rib. So that you have some ribs that are attached and then ribs that are floating down below, and then you have twelve ribs total. So it's like one of the most bottom ones, and you'll find um, where where that fleshy part meets the bony part on the side of your body. Um, if you take a couple of fingers and you massage that on both sides, um, and just think relax and uh, bring your attention and your awareness to your belly to your digestive system and as you massage just feel you might feel a little warmth you might feel a little tingling you might feel activity that's kind of spreading into that area or you might just feel that that wow that point is really sensitive <laughs> or you may not feel anything but typically it's a it's a sensitive point if you need it and so that could be a point to work with on a regular basis for about 30 seconds or so um, of a little bit of um, of firm but yet not excruciating um, acupressure and self massage, and that can just remind the body, oh right, like I, that I can I can allow for there to be free flow of energy through the digestive system, and I can allow for um, for the spleen that that captain of the digestive team um, to feel stronger and less alarmed. So that was that that's um so that's a point that I wanted to share. But yeah, we can do um we can do some other stuff too. So um, I'd invite everybody to to find a comfortable seated position and invite your eyes to close. Okay, so I'm and I'm gonna do this this too a lot. Please do, yeah, yeah. So allow your eyes to close and allow your awareness to drop into your breath. And just without trying to change it, just notice where am I breathing right now? And what's the quality of my breath? So checking in with the speed, the depth, the parts of your body that are breathing versus the parts that are not breathing. Is it rough and choppy or smooth and easy? Just notice Take note. And once you've just checked in with where your breath is now, invite it to deepen. Invite it to just 
have a little more room in your body, which usually means allowing your exhalations to become a little longer. So maybe on your next out breath, invite a little bit more air out of your lungs, which will allow your body to take in new fresh oxygen, new fresh chi from the environment. And as you exhale, you allow yourself to let go of a little bit more tension inviting in a little bit more relaxation and ease. And now your breath is more likely a little deeper. Bring your hands to your belly. And on your inhalation, allow your belly to inflate into your hands like you're blowing up a balloon gently. And as you exhale, invite your belly to move towards your spine. And repeating that a couple of times, inhaling, inflating, letting the belly breath then float up into the chest, and then exhale, belly moves towards the spine, all the air moves out of your body. And again, you inhale and inflate. Feel yourself rejuvenating with fresh chi from the environment and exhaling, letting go of anything you no longer need. Breathing in this relaxed way helps the body shift from the stress mode to the rest and repair or rest and digest mode. And so take a moment to notice how you feel after just a couple of breaths. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes. How did that feel for you? That was great. I um you know, it's amazing how just a few breaths and you see, you can really feel the switch turning off. I, I in, in my book, I talk about before you eat, taking three deep breaths so that you switch from the sympathetic to the parasympathetic. I think it is. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Uh -huh. so that you're not, you know, it sort of basically turns off the stress. And I think this, did, this does the exact same thing, right? Anytime. Yes. Yeah. It's just, you sort of, you can't help but relax a bit when you take you slow deep breaths. Exactly. And, and really, it's like the slow deep breaths um, are, are the way that we communicate back to our nervous system, right? We tell the body that the emergency is over and we shift from that, from that sympathetic fight or flight mode into the rest and digest, rest and repair, um, parasympathetic. There are so many different ways of doing this. I would say like, you know, to strengthen digestion, we could be doing ujjayi breathing. We could be balancing the nervous system with alternate nostril breathing. There, we could be lengthening the exhale. There's so many different like way, riffs and ways of playing with the breath to get this even more, but you can't do any of that until you can just breathe, right? And so I would say like, if that was a struggle for you out there in listener land, that, um, that, it's okay, first of all, like have compassion for yourself because even though that that should be our natural state, the way that we're living our lives, it very often is actually really difficult to do. So if, if you found that difficult, my, my tips for you would be to start lying on your back so that you're not using your postural muscles to keep yourself upright. That can allow for a little more freedom in the belly. Um, and to, to, um, to practice it with gentleness instead of with force, right? The attitude of how we talk to ourselves um, makes a big difference. And that, um, and, and really, yeah, so coming from this place of ease, and then when you can fully tune into your breath and allow for that, it to be soft, long, gentle, and easy, then you can play with things like lengthening the exhalation by two counts, or you can play with some of these more advanced breathing practices, which can be, you know, a lot of times, um, both good for the digestive system as well as calming for the nervous system. So learns lots to do there and more snippets like that. Um, actually, um, you can go to, to brodywelch.com and grab some freebies. There's five biohacks to calm your nervous system that I offer people. And um, the breathing is one of them, but there's uh, several more just ways of using the body to affect the mind. Um, so acupoints and self massage and all sorts of things like that. They're available. Um, it should just pop up on some of the pages. That's fabulous. I was just going to ask you, actually, if you have yeah. on your site like that. So can you tell us how would people get that? Is there a URL or somewhere they can go? There is a URL for that. Um, let's see. It's brodywelch.com slash sign dash up, right? I'm going to put the link under the video anyway. Okay, absolutely. I'll, yeah. 
I'll add the link underneath and I'll add Brody's blog and the link to your course too. Um, Cause great. Is that breathing, are those breathing exercises something that you do inside the course or is that also um, part of what, somewhere on your blog? The, um, it's, so it, the, the breathing thing that we just did, there is, um, you, you can also grab, um, a, an audio meditation where I lead you through a similar breathing exercise that's free and available. Um, it, there's, I have a couple different free opt-ins on my site, so people can certainly visit and, um, and they'll be invited to opt-in. And, and then in the course, it's, um, it, it is, it goes, uh, much more beyond that but uh but basic breath awareness and abdominal breathing is um is part of calm yourself as well yeah that sounds so, that nice. i mean there, there are so many more things we could talk about like we have, i know went into the topic of acupuncture but maybe we'll save that for another time because then we can have another, another chat that way yeah i'd be happy to okay great well brody listen great. thank you so much this has been so informative and i'm thrilled to talk to you so everybody it's brodywelch.com b-r-o-d-i-e-w-e-l-c-h.com but again i'll put the the link below and please take advantage of those gifts from Brody the the uh, five hacks to calm your nervous system sounds terrific and um, check out her course and see if you'd like to um, uh, sign up for that as well so thanks so much for chatting with us it's been great to see you Ricky thank you so much for having me it's been a pleasure and I hope that um, that this has been helpful to people and that everyone out there is taking care of themselves okay great <laughs> take care Take care. Bye-bye.